All right, let's just start. Start the timer, click into the game proper. Won't think I missed anything. Hopefully the captions are uh, going to be set in the recording too. Um, I'm not gonna know how to play this game. Five rights conducted, no, not new. Load campaign. <sighs> so I've got like three more streams or so to beat this game. Where were you? Oh yeah, we just sent Jodariel home, that's good. How hyped am I? Honestly, like on the surface level, I'm excited to see family because that's something that's tangible. Because that they've visited before and I haven't seen them in a couple months. I don't know how to feel about the baby. Like, I'm so ready to see her, but I don't know what it's gonna be like. It's, it's a weird feeling of I'm ready for the unknown. Starting to just like have dreams and thoughts about mostly older, like first day of school type memories that don't exist yet, but starting to get lots of those thoughts and that's crazy. She's gonna be perfect. I'm hoping the, the actual delivery goes smoothly. <sighs> I think I got a lot of these texts out of the way before, and then I was looking at the, um, the sky quit. Thank you. Oh, we're already looking for the stars. That's right, this one happened. Quickly. <sighs> is this everybody, or is it not yet? I can't remember. No. It's a different one where they were all lit up. It's gonna be wild. I think it's funnier. Like, it's interesting to think of myself as almost a parent. Because baby's almost here, but like, thinking about my parents as grandparents for the first time, hmm, that's, that's gonna be weird. I'm starting to call them by their grandparent names and it's adorable. One is correct. The withdrawn, we got manly. So who's on the who's who's gonna be here? I feel like I need to go against him because I don't know what he's about right now. Also need to practice. Cause it's been a while since I've played. I had the pyre hearts kind of figured out before. They still caused me problems, but it still went okay. I think we're gonna fight manly. And if I beat him, I might face the other people, but I, he might just crush his next opponent too. The one minstrel is here. Congratulations on prevailing. We're, all, we're up to 70% success rate in thing. The plan. Alrighty. Let's go play some basketball. Some spirit basketball. Still don't have an idea of how long these are gonna go on. Still have only lost one big one. Is that another thing to squish? Where'd it go? Could have sworn I saw something. It's 
sleeping in my own bed last night felt so good, man. Fish. Um, some interest. Right to train in the ways of the sea dominion. Who am I gonna send? I can't pause and see who I got anymore. Um, I think Rookie honestly needs a little more attention. I don't really care about the fish, but... <clears throat> oh, we've got a crystal uh, trial. I have to be Manly, I th or Wolfred, I think. So who am I sending home? So I like... I tried to send Rookie first, I think. I think pretty sure he's my first one. I kind of want to see what happens if I send Wolfred home. I'm very curious. Because he is talkative as heck in game. I want to see what other people say. Mostly Orlek. I want to see what he does. Because he's been calling him out. Oh yeah, somebody left so I can sell something. I don't know what to equip him with. This is hope good. It's not bad. Eight seconds. I could double his quickness. That seems actually kind of useful. Well, lights are flickering, dude. Here we go. So they met. Proper as ever, yeah. She was like, I wonder if he's learned something since last we met. Okay. These have all been pretty standard. Like, the gimmick is just that you have one person. Yo, he's actually real fast now. That's cool as frick. Ow. That's actually a really good, uh, thing. Ouch! I mean to do that. Well, that was a waste. If you can get the t the uh, distance right, he immediately extinguishes with his uh, his blink, like that. Just instant. I wonder if he can do it through. Um, if there's an aura on top of it, I wonder if he can still do it. I haven't tried doing lots of speed with lots of presence yet. I've put the presence thing on uh, really fast characters, but it seems like speed ramps up much, much faster. Because going all in on presence wasn't that fun, or wasn't that impactful. Lose bow? Bow? Blink ability travels farther than normal. Hmm. I don't know, I feel like it's good enough already. And just super teleport. I'll pass. Time to fish. A dung fish? Ew. Bertrude? The mouthy wraith rebuketh our attempt to summon her. She insisteth that we are too young to understand. Possessing of an ancient understanding, olden ways and olden times. 
many centuries of history held captive there. Perhaps thou couldst introduce, induce the wraith's obedience, reading one. For we she he is not. Obligations only to thee. Ignores the our requests inquiries about this. Reasoning has taken us elsewhere. Da, 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 da. It is possible the others of the southern bogs know something of her. We shall not be tampering further with such sorceries ourselves. The Wraith refuseth to cooperate, suggesteth her predicament is suitably deserved. Mouthy Wraith, she says. Can you believe it? That crone of yours is far too curious, I think. I am beholden to no more than one among you, Nightwings, at a time. Thank the stars it happens to be you rather than her. If that crone attempts to lay her fingers on the Beyonder Crystal again, I shall just have to torment her dreams till she's my age. Do feel free to mention that if it comes up. The foolish manly again. He really didn't like Wolfred, so. The slug market. I'm honestly thinking about using one of these on Manly. Or sorry, Wolfred. I'm gonna buy one just in case so I can reset. Where's Joe Dario's thing? Uh, rookie. Oh, yeah, the fish. Maybe I already sold it. I must have already sold it. Why do I even want to upgrade anymore? Everything's already like super high level. I have like dust left over. As I get more people, or as I, like, lose people, I also have less things to equip. Or I, I like, have less slots to equip things in. Volford isn't slow. I mean, he's, like, based, like, the slowest, but, I don't know, I'm tempted to equip the quickness thing and just make him insane. Let's do it. Oh yeah, we wanted to do this. What would I be doing instead? What am I losing? I have never used the shield ability. The hope is useful. Um, see, this only triggers on extinguishing, and I haven't been in the losing situation in so long. I really like the way I use the sapling naturally synergizes with the way that like it buffs it. I think that would be a good thing to do. Okay, we're doing the left side now. Specifically the one where I can do super big sapling aura. 
because the way it grows kind of sucks. Alright, commence the right. Long ordeal of ours, one way or another, it soon, soon shall be ended, close enough. Reader, the closing days are going to be difficult, no matter what happens. From this point, I'm grateful to have had you by my side. I feel very fortunate. It's taking too long. There we go. We're not enabling anything. The stars once more have mustered wherewithal to usher in the rites. The sky grows dimmer by the day. An age is ending. Surely you must know by now that you shall never all be free. Yet still you struggle to fulfill some senseless plan. But I digress, of course. Oh, it's this some arena, of dude. Us still honor the tradition. Some of us hold dear the teachings of the scribes. This arena took my lunch money last time. <laughs> the night wings come at last, stand once more directly in our way. Suppose I sometimes think you've done this just to spite me, or is that not so? I do not care to hear from you, in fact. Hold your tongues. The time for civil discourse has gone by. All that remains is a bitter rivalry between the greatest of triumvirates and yours. Wow. The trash talk. Who shall it be this time? Who we got? Preparing to fling the orb, charge up speed gets really fast. He's got the sapling stuff. He didn't get the capstone. We've got Manly, Payford, and Sir Tiedemont. After dousing, Pyre is restored. That sucks. That guy is going to be a problem. Slash instantly gets all stamina back. Revive people with banishment. Yeah. Stinking worms, dude. The wider area effect on banishment is annoying. Faster with the orb, stamina really fast, and extra stamina. And they've got the restore thing again. Oh, what's what's their stats? We've got 15 hope, 16 hope, and 19 hope. So the fastest is seven seconds. Pretty slow team, except for that one. It's 21 presents at most. See, Gilman was really useful last time. Um, saps cannot jump. They can't jump, which is really bad for them on defense. So I think Pamethus is going to rock and roll here if I can get everybody but him gone. I think Bertrude's that good here. I think I want somebody really fast. If he's got 11 presents, I don't think that's good enough. I can upgrade this to two extra. So it would be 13 presents. It's still not great.
I don't know. I don't know what to do with him. Ruki became not my favorite character to play as. Pretty darn fast. Let's try getting the, uh, the presence here. Let's see how good that does for me. Ruki. It's actually pretty big. Show them what we got. Ought to know better than waste my breath on you. Know that the indignity which you have put me through shall not go unopposed. Okay, we got fast Wolfrid now. Let's see how this works out. Commence. Ferocity unbridled. And he's slow as molasses, dude. Ow. What the heck? He can't jump. That was an interesting steal. Yeah, took too long. Oh, frick. Merely a glancing blow. Is that a one? Wolfred Sandalwood, why is it really you, my dear friend? Must be mistaking me for someone else, Manly. I'd recognize that upright posture of yours from anywhere. I knew it had to be you. What a glorious surprise indeed. Oh, it's me, all right. But you're no friend of mine, Manly. No more I than I am yours. So cut your nonsense for a change and face me like a proper sap. To have such spark left in those old limbs of yours. Ah, limbs. Nice pun. Nice pun. Well, if you wanted me to be rude, then fine. Let's have it your way, sir. Manly Tinder Scout has such a mind for politics. Whoa, Wouldn't that was not what I wanted to do. Rights. Nope. See ya. Now I just fly it in. Whoa, okay. Never mind. See ya. Why, that was all of them. Ah! He came back. Frick. God, I can't grab the thing and live. Okay, I've got the presence here. Yeah. God dang the st that strat is nuts, dude. Get out of here. Hey Rainbow. Oh, they're going to catch it? No, they're not going to catch it. They restored like 12 there. I wonder shall the night wings press their luck. Was almost cool. Whoa now. Got one. See ya. Get in there, get in there, Frick. I should be good now, because no jumping. Oh, they have a jumper. Easy peasy. Douse the pyre without vanishing. That's not going to happen. My team is not built for that. Ricky can't jump. I ran too far. They're going to throw it. Throwing it is their main strat, because it uh, restores their... Higher. God, Rookie has like no stamina, dude. I don't want the orb, dude. Get this frick out of here. This is bad. Alright. Oh, we almost walked it in, man. Away. 
There we go. Any score wins. Now end the ceremony. Oh boy, we're fine. We're gonna win. And it is done. The night wings. Just like a sport? Yeah, you can think of it like that. Alas, that the adversary. It's like basketball for your soul. The right is done. Though they fought us fiercely many times, I doubt that it shall be enough. They won't have much of any chance getting out of here anymore, will they? Why you have spurned me thus, I shall never understand. You bring great harm unto our country by preventing my return. Know that your wrongful deeds are duly noted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The do tend to teach something of trust. Basically, you have to win the basketball to escape this purgatory. Until the next right. If there even is to be another one. Straight to the stars every time, man. Okay, we'll see what uh, the leaderboards look like after this. Yo, is it already time? Holy cow. Alright. I thought I was gonna get another one. So we got the pyre hearts up against us. Alrighty, that's the tough one, dude. I think... Um, using Volfrid might help. <laughs> He's rooting for me. He doesn't want to act like he is, but he is. Sir Gilman is ser searching intently for something or other. His eye is shut tight, brow furrowed deep in deep concentration. Acknowledges your pre presence in the most minimal way possible. Continues scanning the environment. You shall have to forgive this knight's impertinence to you, Master Reader, for he is on the hunt at this time. Using his acute sense of hearing, which is much more acute whilst underwater, but still have to, su still have, but shall have to suffice in this case. Track down a most elusive character. Character has eluded this knight time and time again, from whom this knight seeks to learn still superior evasive strategies applicable when next he may conduct the right. <laughs> this knight has failed again. Were they playing hide and seek, dude? Reveal your secret of speed and cunning. It may be adv must be advantageous to possess four feet while this knight has but one, if so it may be called, and yet we are all born with necessary means and we must all make do. This knight deserves no break, not while there is honor to be gained. He is merely a worm, one of roughly eight billion of his kind. Thus he must strive to be remarkable and to exceed what is expected of him. You've been downright decent. For a moment you wonder if Sir Gilman is about to reap. Weep, not reap. Alright. There's that thing squishing. Get squished.
Oh, hello, friend. Is this him? Is he gonna is he gonna try to screw me over here? The false night wings? Atop his wagon? Didn't know he had a wagon. Again you seek to climb that cursed mountain beneath us. Again you seek to take my rightful place. I should send you crashing down to it that you might fall as I have. But I shall not. Rather we shall meet upon the summit, ere the last cycle of rites is ended. Until then. So it's not this time. Pamatha gains favor. Volfrid shall gain favor. We're doing Volfrid here. Orlex spoke the truth. He has a right to gain the summit. When the time comes, Celeste shall deem him worthy and let him pass. While he has transgressed against the rites, he has also already been anointed and prevailed. Nothing is written in the book on this, and leave it liberty ought already be his. For the time it seems that he has not yet traveled to the summit, perhaps he is still making preparations with his fellow exiles. Shall we prepare? Ooh, plus three glory. That's a good one. Nice. His head covers the dang experience bar. Can't tell how much he had. See, th these are actually all pretty insane. This game is unintelligible. Really, the only thing that matters from like a viewer perspective, I think, is um, what goes on in the games. I don't know, I feel like this one's actually better than I give it credit for. Cause that, that allows me to play pretty aggressively. Oh, we're stuck. Ah, yes. A messenger imp. This news. The news this time pertains to Jodariel, whom you liberated. Past transgressions have all been forgiven. She soon was to be reinstated on the blood border. On the presumption that she wanted her old status back, in fact, she was offered an especially prestigious leadership position in the First Veil, vale, which is an elite platoon shrouded in secrecy, famous results, yada yada yada. Basically, the Marines are the... SEAL Team 6 of <laughs> this this world. For a demon such as she could not be seen in the streets, but she refused the gesture. Rather brunt bluntly, the report suggests, she sought the uh, Volfred's agents, as well as several of her former fostered sons and daughters, so the ranks of the revolution grew stronger. The last part of the message must have been cha damaged in transit, though it appears to be in Jodaria's old words. All you can tell is that it says await. She's an inspiration to us all. Yay, hope. Escutin Luxala. I summon Gate Guardian. Salutium, Seres. Simnaterus. Horana Cramptus. Norgasum Gratas. Kibaret. Samea. Retira Tempta. Felanta Acertava. Secret conversation, alright. Oh, nice. They're singing together. Oh, gosh. 
fucking fly. The weeping flowers hide from the song of gentle morning for the lost and lonesome bride. Now he rolls through hill and valley, and the canyons open wide, singing songs of gentle morning for his lost and lonesome bride. For his lost and lonesome bride. Oh, sympathies. Interesting last note there. Nothing else to do in here? <sighs> Commence the right. The <laughs> minstrel returns. There is something I wish to ask you, something which ordinarily would not be my place to discuss in any detail. You observe the stars. If you would not mind my asking you in such direct manner, how many liberation rites are you supposing yet remain? Two. I think there's two. I concur with your evaluation. Make certain you are aware. What shall happen once the final liberation rite is ended, we shall soon both find out. But for now, it's time. Enabling any of this BS. that you think back for just a moment, if you please. When you first looked upon the Book of Rites, think back upon the words that it revealed. Oblige the voice that tells you more. Oblige the voice that tells you more. Would that the scribes were here among us still. I would not sing your praises to them, rest assured. I trust that you shall savor this occasion. You shan't have to oblige me for much longer. The pyres burn and each of the triumvirates is present and prepared. Sir Deluge tentatively slithers forwards and starts to struggle with his mask again. This knight is called Sir Deluge. He is among the most decorated knights of the Sea Dominion, having survived many, many battles. Record well these proceedings, for his valor shall soon become the stuff of legend and probably some of your songs. Not that you have so fled from every battle in which you were expected to fight, Sir Deluge, or have our messengers all been misled in this. Lies spread, no doubt, by the detestable Nightwings, their treachery is such that they dared steal one of our own triumvirate. It's for the triumvirates to decide who shall stand with them. If one of your pyre hearts was taken in by the Nightwings, then ask yourself why your companion would have left. This knight knows f knows why full well, because not all who hail from the Sea Dominion seem to know the meaning of honor. Now for the grave injury, which you have caused the pyre hearts, we hereby challenge you. Know that these, this knight would strongly prefer a traditional duel to the death. Such a shame that bloodshed is against the rules. He somehow puts his mask back on. Protect your liege at all costs, Pyre Hearts. His liberty depends on it, and if this knight is not getting out of here, then neither are you. In whose name shall you conduct this right? So we cannot send Wolfred home yet. He is still not number one or number three. And yeah, not even by not even close. Alright. Who is it gonna be? See I feel I feel bad for Ruki. I really do.
I think it's just, I think it's the wrong decision if I pick him, though. What do we got? What are we going against? This is that stupid one that takes you with it. They have nothing. They're still not level 5. Wider area of effect. Instantly burn stamina after using Slash. They return super fast and can revive each other. Five seconds. Frick me, I hate this team, dude. <laughs> Alright, so we're we're doing Mooncrest shenanigans. 100%. We're 100% doing Mooncrest shenanigans, I think. Or maybe instead it's um, this thing that makes him return two seconds later. That might be good. Maybe instead of um, his quickness I do that. I don't know, the quickness is pretty good. Kind of liking how fast he is now. I wonder if they have any way through. If, um... Like, I wonder if they can get through the sapling. At all. I think there's definitely a way they can. I don't know, dude. I don't know. I feel bad for Rookie, but I don't think he's the pick. Who shall be at her side? Oops, that was the wrong button. Uh, one presence. Who's gonna get the most out of that? Honestly, not. It wouldn't have been her. I'm gonna wait to use that, I think. Pierces solid objects. I don't know if that's better than... I think it's more important that she gets the other thing, to be honest. Who has the reviving stuff that brings people back? It's it's Gilman, right? Yeah, he can re return people. Her hope is pretty bad. Pamitha's, I think, is... She's kind of built around coming back anyway. After plunging, Rookie returns, rather than remain remaining banished. Maybe Bertrude isn't the thing. Isn't the pick. I think she was the reason I won last time, though, which is why I'm curious. I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of her. Yeah, I'm building a team. I have to pick three. Let's, let's do big slow for him. I think Bertrude was the reason I won. I, I'm scared to not use her. I think it is also extremely thematic that Gilman plays, though. Jump farther than usual. I don't care. It's like, give him much bigger presence. Maybe that would be useful. He doesn't need to be any faster. Let's just give him the presence now. Because this gives me... This gives me revives and a way of bringing people back. Very well. <sighs> Okay, here's the strat. Oh god, they have the ball. Did 
didn't get the uh, the extra revive there, I think. A moment, Sir Deluge. What is with you this night? Knight is trying to concentrate. This knight has a burning question which he must ask of you, sir. What do you gain if you prevail here? You who fled the siege of the Spiral Sanctum, what would you do if you returned unto that land? You would be returned unto an even higher station on the front, you know, good Sir Deluge, where you might brave many more battles for the glory of the Commonwealth. Is that your wish? This knight shall survive, whatever it shall take, whether in the Sea Dominion, the Commonwealth, or in this blasted place, he's getting out of here. You could have survived too, but no, now we're enemies. Once this knight is free, shall make everyone in the Commonwealth aware of your great treachery. Nice whiff. Ah! I went way too far past. Get owned. Oh, that was a good one, Al. Alfred. Nice jump. I need stamina. I'm gonna... I didn't fly in, so I'm gonna not get as much. I don't think she comes back. Why is it raining now? The poor pyre is getting soaked, although, although... Sir Delius much have, must have realized this disadvantage applies equally to you as it does to the pyre hearts. Your pyres shall gradually be drained by the rainfall. Oh dear. So I guess it's every turn. So as long as I don't get completely owned. Get him, get him, get him, get him. That's fair. There's the cheese that they keep doing. Nice jumps, Frick. Ah, messed up. Raining plus five, oh dear. Is this gonna go down again? It's not gonna go down again. Get in there, buddy. Remember everything which you hold dear. Now go on just once more. Just once more. Get in there, Pamphlet. And there it is, at last. She's free. The blasted night wings proved. The blasted worth. night wings. As for their adversaries, they did not. Thus ends the liberation rite, and thus the scribes have chosen. I sent both her and Jodariel back. The exile appointed by the Night Wings shall be free. Sounds like he was struggling Absolve to get through that one. Misdeeds. He Return really didn't want to say that. In the Commonwealth. Her adversary and all others shall remain to carry out their rightful sentences. Per poor Sir Deluge. What am I supposed to give a speech or something? Still no idea why you picked me. I do have one, but I don't think it's right. If you wanted to get rid of me by now, you needn't have gone through such lengths. So I'm left only to conclude that you did this for me. The years I spent down here in one sense, they've all been such a waste. Utterly for nothing, spectacularly so. I thought my relationship with Tamitha had nowhere left to go but up. But you know, not quite the case. Think of what on what would have become of me had I made no attempt to set things right. Had I not done everything I have, could have lived with that, I think. Could not have lived with that, I think. Was so certain my life would end down here. I'm only now beginning to consider that the opposite may have come true instead. What I'm trying to say is thanks. And Ruki, catch. He got the hat, dude. 
He got the hat. We'll have to see what we can do up there, provided that my sisters haven't gone their way, had their way with it just yet. Let's find a way to keep in touch, just in case. Goodbye. Godspeed, Pamatha Thane. The cycle of the rites is nearly at an end. So Bertrude was not an integral part of the strategy. I actually didn't need her. It's more about how you're playing. Excellently done. Perhaps this knight too may regain his honor. We're gonna have to pick one person, dude. One person gets to go. It's gonna be tough. Last light of the stars still shines for us above. At this point, what is to become of our plan needn't be the subject of our own speculation. I trust that we'll learn the outcome soon enough. Our actions to this point shall pave the way, perhaps our faith as well. So now let's focus on this. We stand upon the brink of the last turn of the cycle of the rites. Final chance to get one of you home. Now read her up for a little stargazing. I'm assuming they're all available, or just these three? Just those three. 79%. Still don't know how to feel about the, uh... The percentage here. One right remaining, one until. I don't get the chance to face the chastity or the dissidents, so who gets to actually face me is not up to me. I can't, like, stop one of them from doing it. Two and one, two and oh. I have not placed fa faced these people three times, so I'm just going to do that. I'm not going to think too much more about it. Typically, Ruki would be fast asleep by this late hour. He's wide awake yet. Now, however, staring off at the unseen, you startle him somehow. Don't know, feeling weird or something, I guess. We got her out. Shouldn't have had to be stuck here forever, and now she ain't. Turns out I got some feelings for the girl. Though don't go telling anyone I said it, else I'll bite you right in the hand. I know I ain't her type, it's just we all got all these stupid- we all have these stupid feelings. We're stuck with them and that's how it is. Got plenty of her own, I bet. Once in a while, feelings like that happen to be shared, but it's all just a roll of the dice. Girl like that, she won't think twice about old Rookie Greentail when she's back there, sitting pretty on some tower there or something. I just hope they let her fly again, you know. Gonna sound pretty stupid, but who cares? It's stupid, but I'm thinking that if I ever get out of here, I'm gonna track her down. It's about as far as I figured out. I think I gotta send him home, dude. I think I gotta send Ruki home. I feel so bad for him. Whoa! We got an oyster. Sparkly thing is its center is in fact its heart, which it airs out from time to time. Oh, I can't pick it up. I thought it was growing it the whole time and I could like sell it. Well, then I would kill it, so no, it's just pretty. So who we got, who we got? We've got Ruki, who wants to go see his mom. And Pam, apparently. But he's 
settled his score with the people he needed to settle the score with already. So like he's already done something. He's gotten like paid his debt, whatever he needs to do, that's done. Sir Gilman wants to prove his like his worth and his honor. He's done. He's stood up to his captain a couple times, I think, at this point. I'm not sure what else he needs. Wolfrid exists to, like, make the plan happen. And the fact that he's okay with not leaving in the first place makes me not want to send him, but I'm also curious to see what would happen if he was out there. And Bertrude is, like, super-duper obedient to Wolfrid, so I just, I lean in towards Rookie. I have the most emotions for Rookie, despite my interest. I wish it was easier to see what you recently found. Afterward. As an exile of the downside, as a reader of this book, as conductor of the rites, you are engaged now in a cycle which has lasted since the dawn of this age. Here within this part of the book is offered summary of all key figures, locales. It's a freaking glossary, dude. To know the history of the downside and the rights is to prepare yourself to walk the path forward to enlightenment and then to liberty itself. Should you be free again, remember to reveal not the rights themselves nor the existence of this book. Rights terms. Oh, it actually is a glossary. God, there's so much. There's so much to read. I think it's true love. I think Rookie's story... I think he needs to get out. I think he deserves it. But we're gonna be going against... Dude bro, though. Oralex said he was gonna show up next time, and he took my lunch money last time. Oh, hi, friend. You ain't better than the dung I stepped in last night. Thank you? Sand or sand. Oh, nope, there's this too. The shunt. Wolfrid expresses interest. Steve Bertrude here. Because I was like, I was all in on Wolfrid for a minute, and now I think I'm gonna I'm gonna ensure Rookie gets there. I got fungus, yum. To the cairn. a big one. <laughs> Plus 10. Buy all my fungus, dude. Pamatha really was, I think, the best character. I feel like there's nothing really bad about buying these now because I'm almost done. <laughs> Ay! Gonna get an edge. God, I could keep buying them. Just buy one of each. I'm not gonna use the money, so might as well. I think everything I care about is already level 20, so I don't think I need to buy anything else. Nobody's here. Commence the right. Ah, 
I have checked and it appears as though the essence have not yet arrived. There is no sign of Tamitha or anyone. Their sigil is not set either. The stars indicate that you are mistaken. Where are they? Who's here? Commonwealth, your home. Today it is a flame, much like a stack of books. A flame because of you, because of your outlandish plan. Not that you care, not that you shall live to see this place again. Your attempts at revolution shan't succeed. Though by all means, keep trying. As for myself, I shall enjoy presiding over these remaining rites. The rite is set to commence, but your adversaries have failed to show. Under unfortunate, but understandable. They knew that they would never make it to another one. Cannot blame them for not wishing to participate. They are beginning to decide the stars are not worth heeding any longer. We have begun the ceremony, so we shall end it. Choose quickly your All right. Triumvirate. Who's going to show up, though? Volfred. Whoa. Let's do that. Who did I give the presents from? Swap that over. I have no idea who I'm going to go against. I'm assuming I'm going against someone. Oh, I didn't equip him with the thing. Whatever. I didn't equip anybody with anything. I meant to put the quickness on Wolfred. I wonder if I can do multiple of the quickness potions. That would be pretty wild. Bertrude. Exalia. Now. You take no pleasure snuffing out a flame disowned. Ain't nobody here, dude. Now Just in case. Even your adversaries hmm. have abandoned you. And it is done. <laughs> the night wings prevail by default. <laughs> All Not right. that their adversaries even care. Good job, Ruki. I buffed Bertrude for that. <laughs> well, Boundless are the teachings of the scribes. Nobody got any XP, but Ruki is still in, like, Not top three. Uh, and wallow in the downside for a while. Alrighty. I wonder if it's intentional that you don't get to face anybody who's in contention. Because I didn't have any options. Alright. One final star. I have no idea if it's actually going to end here. The true night wings. Your record is 0 and 1. He's already there. 
The eight scribes created the night wings in their own likeness. Perhaps it's only fitting that the night wings should, in the end, be forced to face themselves. I honestly think I lost the, um, the match I faced against him purely because of the arena. I got completely dismantled by the arena. Foolish reader. Your so-called friends. You are accomplice to their hateful plot. They are exploiting you. You shall never have your freedom. Cool. What if I don't care about my freedom? And the guy whose name I don't remember. Oh. As you lift into the skies, the lone minstrel raises his voice, cutting through the somber mood. A certain old ballad comes to mind just now. I think it may befit the circumstance. Perhaps it may help to pass the time along the flight. By all means. Gonna have to buy the soundtrack. Gonna have to buy the soundtrack. I don't think I've I've gotten I've I don't think I've submitted Rookie for a chance at freedom, because I think the first time I did, I think I tried to do Tizo. So I think this is actually going to be his first chance. I just want to see my mom and those stupid uncles, too. You better pick me, chum. Plus two presents. Oh, that's pretty good for him. I don't know if I can get him all the way to level five. Because if I don't, then it doesn't make a sen any sense to actually tutor him. Can I see? Current inspiration. I get a thousand for enlightening, I think. For tutoring. I don't know if the inspiration counts towards it, though. Nope. Only a thousand. You don't get the inspiration. Oh well. I could have gotten Bertrude to level 3, but that's fine. I probably am. I think I actually will pick her, so. Sorry, level 4 and not level 3. The Messenger Imp. Details of Pamatha. She found herself back in the homeland of her enemies, where, despite her connection to the High Wing remnants, her past transgressions were forgiven. She has her hat back. She didn't have that when she left. In fact, she was asked to join the military council, given her unique background, yet she refused to cooperate and instead demanded to be reunited with her sister, Tamitha, when they threatened her with a re-sentencing to exile and insisted that she take the opportunity. Tamitha said at last that she would think it over and return with a decision soon. 
Next she was seen, however, among Wolfrid's sons and daughters of the Revolution, where it is said she attached her loyalty, at least for the time. We suspect the ancient enmity between the winged and the flightless shall so not soon be resolved, if ever at all. Yay, extra hope. I better not lose to Orlek, dude. I don't want to lose to Orlek. Gate Escutine Guardian. Tava. We shall not meet again after the coming rite. Salutium, seras. Omphisacare. Taruntada. Taranilum. Nothing, not for the rites or us. Not till the dawn Tansare of a new age. Lotium. My name is Wolfred Sandalwood. I long as yet to see an age where freedom is one's birthright and no longer are good people such as those forced to contend for it. We are called Big Bertrude. Seek to fulfill the plan of Sandalwood, for we are fond of him and his beliefs, and then go about our business. Sir Gilman of the Sea Dominion, at your service. Knight's a never ending quest for honor shan't in here. Yet first, he has a noble duty to uphold. Rookie Greentail's my name. Remember me? I just want to get out of here with all my chums and go see Mama. As long as she knows I'm alright. I don't know why it doesn't show up. It should. Maybe I can refresh it. Let me try to do that real quick. Think that's how you do it? I don't know what the problem is. Probably just stream elements. The rites are not yet ending. You gain the summit of Mount Elodiol for the seventh time, the final time in which any of you shall have a chance to leave. Oops, I didn't want to go in here. Probably heard the big news, probably going out of business here. Five percent off, yay, great. <laughs> One coin off, dude. Oh, these are two coins off. Pardon me. Alright, we're gonna be... Oh, it's exactly as much as I have. Well, I can sell the shroom too, I guess. He has two extra things to eat, I guess. Oh, wait, no. Who, who left? Um... Who did I just send home? Pamitha, I already sold her thing. What a steal. Okay, we're gonna buff people. We're gonna remember to do it. I saved my money for this very moment. Peter, we may not have a chance to speak again after this. I may have to go. I wish to say that I am grateful for having made your acquaintance. And I shall remember you with fondness. I wish you well. This night and always. Go forth with glory. Clasp it. That was a cool handshake sound, dude. You see, Bertrude has joined you. All of your companions are there with her, in fact. Reading one, thou art both wiser and less irritating than most others of Mike of thy kind. We have learned something from thee, and we are grateful. You got this, chum. You got this far. I mean, no way this is any tougher than what it took to get here. It's been this night's greatest honor to have served with you. Let this be our most glorious stand yet. Strange for me to say, given the circumstances of our meeting, that it has truly been a pleasure. Onward now, let us achieve our plan. Eighty-two percent on the plan. It 
It's like the people you care the most about actually contribute the least to the plan. Solium, dear reader. I, feel, I still think Solu Soliam is a better time. way to say that. For soon, the few remaining stars shall fade away, leaving you stranded there for your remaining days in that forsaken land where you deserve to be. The rabble that you roused here in the Commonwealth shall be put down. The exiles whom you liberated all shall fall in line. But first, let us get on with this last liberation right. You face none other than yourselves. Each so unlike the glorious night wings of yore. Tis a shame that one of you shall soon be free. For you deserve each other. The pyres burn, and each of the triumvirates is present and prepared. But before the lone minstrel can concur as per the custom, not another word. The false night wings have arrived at last. Long have I awaited this. My freedom once was stolen from me, then I was cheated of it here upon this mountaintop. You may now attempt to take it from me once more. Oh, he's a coal guy. He's got coal. Who, if anyone among you, shall go free this one last time? The rest of you shall remain in the downside to the end of your days. One by one you meet the gazes of each of your fellow exiles. Ruki, Gilman, Wolfrid, Bertrude. Come this far, but now the downside and the rights conspire to tear your group apart and disrupt your plan. Are you prepared? I'm ready. One final opportunity for salvation. Is this the end of the game? I don't know. Too bad for the I think it is. All right, he got some extra presents. What are we going against? Who are our adversaries? I think the imp, like, tore me apart. Whoa, that's only level 10. That's not normal. The imp tore me apart last time, I think. 19 presents. Level 5. He's got 40 presents! His hope is horrible, though. That was how I, uh, I planned on getting him last time. He's only got 20 glory. It's, like, pretty small for her. Somebody like that. Banish by flinging, drops people when they, uh, lands next to him, double rush, and he does the salute thing, which does extra. Mooncrest. Oh, it's a level 5 Mooncrest, actually. That's only 15%. That's not that bad. Oh, this is a savage, dude. I hate the savages. They're almost as bad as the worms. Fling. Charge up time for aura. Sprints and jumps while holding the orb without stamina. Yep, that's gonna be annoying. At least it isn't the full fling build. The full fling build is nasty. Okay, we have not so great presence, pretty good, and then amazing. So he's gonna mow over people unless I can shoot it out. So that's Rookie's job. He's got a whole lot of higher health. Okay. Oh, I didn't see the other stuff. How fast are they? Pretty f He's 20 quickness. He's really fast for a demon. 12. That's not very fast, but he, like, he gets the, um, yeah, zipping faster and flying faster. Okay. What does Ruki's presence look like? 15. We got 40 is obviously uncounterable. 12 and 19. So if I can get him... 
to have enough. He might be able to take out the uh, the imp. I think Gilman might not be in. I don't know. Gilman's fast, though. That's the thing. Bertrude has really insane um, aura casting, though, and I think aura casting is what I need. I don't know if Wolfred's going to be very useful because the imp is going to fly and the other guy's going to jump. I honestly think Wolfred might be out. Fifteen presents. If I take this away, he has less than... Yeah, he only has seven. So Gilman might be better at chasing people down with the presents thing then. Let's buff his... Yeah, I've got three presence potions. Let's buff that. So Ruki, what is he going to have? Fast stamina. After banishing a ban banished ally has a chance to come back. Honestly, I think this might be good. Plus two seconds. I think I'm going to be banishing a lot with him. Or I could just do quickness. Quickness is never bad. I would have two really fast characters. Hope, quickness, hope, quickness, and presence. Bertrude's not going to have a lot of presence because she's going to be shooting Aurora so much. One more of those. Um, got two more of these. His hope is already really high. I'll just give one to everybody. All right, Rookie. You serious, chum? Who shall stand with him? Okay, I think her piercing thing is just too good. Her hope is pretty trash. So let's buff that. I think quickness, she deserves that, and I'm not going to give her the presents, and I'll give the other three to Gilman. Gonna be free, I don't know about that. I'm not gonna say with certainty. Twenty-six presents on this lad. Twenty-six. He's so fast. Sir Gilman. Oh, that doesn't do anything, does it? I don't think it does anything. It looks tiny. Maybe it affects it how long dark. his trail is. I think it doesn't do anything. Oh no. I'm wondering if I'm gonna give myself a mulligan for that. I think I might. Who asserts their will over this group? The Shadow of the False Nightwings. See, if I think I'm gonna give myself a mulligan, I think I wanna do it now. I don't think presence actually works on him. I'm gonna do it again and put the presence stuff on Ruki. I've done this a couple times because I've just goofed something up and there's no way to go backwards through the process of picking your people. Okay. So we pick Rookie first. Um, so he's not going to have the quickness thing, but he's going to get the present stuff. Shoot, let's just give it all to him, man. Can I click on Gilman and see what presence does? Or a size. I think it's, it would just make his aura trail longer. Honestly. 
But I don't know if that would also be buffed by speed. I don't think it would be. So I think Ruki's good the way he is here. I'll give him hope. He already comes back so fast. It's four seconds. Like, I feel like he's not the one that I need to worry about. He also has the thing where he comes back after plunging. So I feel like he's going to get the most out of the hope, actually. Let's do that. 23 presents. I'm just going to give him the other one, right? There's no point in not getting it. Now. I feel like that's good. Who shall stand okay, with him? so he's going to get the fast thing. He's going to get a hope. And he's going to get a quickness, not that one. Does he need a quickness? I don't think he needs one with this. He's fast enough. And then Gertrude can get everything else. Quickness. Hope. Alrighty, this should be it. The choice is cast. By the light of dawn, the cycle of the rites shall cease. See if we can finish this ordeal before that time. Let our song this evening shake the stars themselves. Alrighty, don't lose. Begin the final Ow. Of the age. He's so good at the game, dude. How is he so good at the game, man? Ow. Ow. He's got a habit. Where'd the other guy go? Ouch! Oh! Frick me, dude! He's got another one! One hundred and forty, man. The sky rains ash. Soon you shall your own pyres, your pyres own, mingle with them. Rain down fire. What is that gonna do? Ah! Pardon? Oh, there we go. Nice, 32. Let's go. And Bertrude doesn't leave. Oh, I see what it's doing. Ah, oh, that's too fast. Is that a jump? How did he get around? That's bad. Come on, Rookie, get back. Oh, they're so fast at charging the... The savages are so fast at charging Aura. It's so hard to get through. Oh. 
Going too fast! I was so close, dude. Oh, that's bad. That's yeah, fine. Oh, that's a sigil for death. That's fine. I think I aimed that correctly. I didn't aim it far enough, though. The orb! The orb! Watch the orb! Get him, get him, get him. Frick, he blew up. Go, Gilman, go! Oh, thanks for the assist, buddy. Oh. Oh, I ran right into that, man. Bertrude's good. I threw it! I didn't throw it far enough. Frick. Come on, Bertrude. Keep him out. Woo! The bomb crow dove into the flame. She's not coming back, so I might get scored on here. How he has changed that warlick. Old and bitter, low these many years. Oh! Let's go! Orlex stands breathing heavily. He looks back on the thin lick of flame that is his smoldering pyre before turning his attention back to your triumvirate. He's gonna jump! He's gonna jump, dude. Okay. Whoa. I think I've got this. No, I don't got this. Got her back. Oh, I, I couldn't attack fast enough. Got her. Got him. Get out of here. No, I didn't grab it! Got him. So go, Rookie, go! Frick. <laughs> Ow. It's not far enough. He's so far away. Go, 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 go! Frick! How do I not keep killing him, dude? I keep not killing him. Swap characters, my dude! That's how I lost last time. Oh, that sucks. Simply monstrous. Did the throw, monster man. The throw. They're not down a person. All of you shall rot here. You shall rot as I have all these many years. False night wings who would deny me once again my rightful liberty. You who deny that liberty to all your triumphs you face and vanquish under the guise of the traditions of those blasted scribes. Come, let us continue with this glorious affair. Bad move. Gilman, you've got this. Just get there, dude. Just get there. Frick. Ow. I can't get him. It wasn't Rookie. The <laughs> wings proved their worth. An outcome which left little room for doubt. <sighs> thus ends the liberation right. And thus He's thus wagging his tail. Chosen. Look at him. Woohoo! I can't believe it. I mean, that's not to say I didn't think we could, but wow, we really did. You look upon Ruki for what you shall expect to be the last time you see each other. Any moment now the Shimmer Pool shall engulf him. Any moment now he shall receive glory. Don't, don't not send him back. Don't talk like this. Stop. 
Any moment now, please send him back. No. And thus, the scribes Don't have send Orlick. And thus, the scribes no. have chosen. And thus, the scribes have chosen. No. No. Nightwings. Frida. What have you done? Their greatest treachery for last. <gasps> Are we all going back? Shimmer pools appeared again. Don't you push him off the edge, dude. Different somehow, but open. Ruki looks upon it, but it does not engulf him, or not at least not yet. This is not their greatest treachery, it is their greatest jest. The shimmer pool is flung wide open. It seems that all are worthy now of freedom. Halt, Orelek. The shimmer pool has lost most of its strength. You step inside and you shall surely drown, of that I can assure you. Then we have all been cheated. The shimmer pool is revealed and one of you still may, may still return as planned. But as for who returns, someone shall have to choose ere the light, last light of the stars is extinguished and the rites cease to be. This is the final trial of the scribes. The victor of the confrontation is to be the one to make the choice amongst the closest to the scribes, either the anointed or they who anointed them. Ruki, make your decision quickly. Got some good news and bad news, chum. The good news is you're getting out of here. The bad news is no, no time for long goodbyes. Ruki wishes to give up his freedom so that you may regain yours. It may keep bouncing back and forth like this absurd. It may until such time as one of you is willing to accept the burden and the outcome of the choice. That is the trial, and I fear there is little time remaining. If you and your companion are too cordial with each other to accept that freedom, either one of you, I shall gladly take it. Freedom ought to be more than some flirtatious trifle to exchange. I can choose Oralek, dude. Except, kick him in there, dude. Get him out of here. You gave a chance at freedom so that Ruki may yet have his. May he return in glory. He's He better get back, dude. The Commonwealth. What shall become of it? What shall become of us? Don't turn him into another star. Actually Night send him wings. back. The opportunity to gain your freedom from the downside. Was it not enough? Maybe if Orlick wasn't such a punk, I could have chosen him. But no, he had to be a jerk. That night, the exile Ruki returned to the Commonwealth. Where's my cursor? Oh, he was to be the last. Stars had faded and the cycle of the rites had run its course. Do I just press X? All right. He found the Commonwealth in great upheaval. 
Spurred by the efforts of five liberated exiles, Wolfred Sandalwood's revolutionary plan had incited the masses. These exiles in the starless sky pretended the return of the scribes. The people surged into the streets, shoulder to shoulder. Led by the five exiles, their voices shook the heavens. The leadership of the Commonwealth panicked. No blood was shed that night, but by dawn it was over. The leaders of the Commonwealth had cast themselves back into exile, or joined in this new cause. Thus, in its 838th year, the Commonwealth had fallen. The new Sahrian Union declared its sovereignty in the next year. Among the changes its elected leaders ushered in, they vowed never to cast their people into exile, and they abolished the old Commonwealth decree forbidding literacy. To state, today we still remember all of this. We remember the exiles of the downside whose deeds led to the dawning of our age, whether they returned or not. Got a hair in my mouth, man. Oh yeah, he got out. I forgot about him, dude. He ran into Joe Dariel without the presence of the rights. They hit it off that time. She denied ever enjoying his company, yet they never left each other's side. Those glory days as the most powerful conductor of the rights had long since passed, he always enjoyed the fearsome reputation he had cultivated at that time. Oh, we get to see what everybody does. See, I, I feel bad for Orlek, but he was a turd, dude. What about the shopkeeper? With the rights drawn to a close, the slug market's revenues fell precipitously, and Falconron was forced to li liquidate his assets and close up shop. Yet, as is sometimes the case with those of an entrepreneurial leaning, this time of hardship led to an epiphany, or at least a sudden change of fortune. One day, he had a run-in with a messenger imp bearing news from the other side. Ron gave it to one of his remaining trink gave, gave to it one of his remaining trinkets which could not be sold. The following week, the messenger imp returned to him, bearing a tidy sum of wealth in newly minted coinage from the Saurian Union. Falcon Run cut a long-term deal with the messenger imp then and there. Though this trade remained a gray area from a legal standpoint in the Union, the newfound fame of the downside caused Falcon Ron's goods to explode in popularity. He later signed an elaborate agreement with Big Bertrudes, found a distribution partner on the other side through Rookie, whose own business had expanded. Especially in the Saurian Union, Falcon Ron's good are, goods are still known for their superior quality, though he assumes no liability for side effects. I can't scroll all the way down. I can't see Tizo anymore. He's so cute! The imp called Tizo is the first of his kind to achieve liberty through the rites. I'll read Rookie's next. While he was not the only imp trained in the way of the scribes, imps are native to the downside and thus are not care not for traveling abroad. It's made them useful to triumvirates. Get Tizo had a different calling. The Nightwings believed that he too could play a key part in Wolfred's plan. During the night of the scribes' return, inspired by the liberated exiles, people of Commonwealth demanded a leadership. Yep, 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 yep. He stood out to the populace as somewhat of a miracle. Something of a miracle. They had only heard of downside imps before from his legend from legends of Haub. Afterwards, he became something of an icon, representing both the fall of the Commonwealth and the beginning of a new era. He would visit his friend May at every opportunity. She was among the few who could consistently interpret what he meant. And they were always close since first they met. Wolfred would sometimes send him little, send him little... I can't talk today, dude. Sometimes send him little gifts all the way from the downside. Despite the insurmountable distance between them, their friendship proved to be more than resilient. 
Tizo missed his interactions with the reader of the Nightwings, they'd quickly built quite a rapport back in the downside. Tizo would often express wist- wistful gratitude for all his time conducting the rites alongside the Nightwings, who made such sacrifices for him. Other than that, he was diligent about his role as something of a livid, living artifact and helped interpret for the messenger imps that relayed news to and from the downside. Despite having gained significant celebrity, he never let it go to his head, though he did take full advantage of his access to the Union's fishing industry. He got his fish, dude. Where's Rookie? Saint Rookie. After Rookie Greentail earned back his freedom, he returned to a lavish welcome ceremony in the Commonwealth, as was the tendency for liberated exiles everything he could have hoped for and soon he was well off surrounded by luxury choosing between various exciting opportunities he must have given in to his better judgment as he did end up siding with sandalwood's revolutionary formis- forces as he promised on the night of the scribe's return greentail was there with the others inspiring the masses he never looked prouder the very image of yomer may main himself when dawn finally came it became clear that the commonwealth that everyone knew would be no more he realized many opportunities awaited. It began quite a lucrative career for himself, manufacturing and selling replica merchandise inspired by the downside. Main struggle was to meet demand. An aspect of his conscience ca- cautioned him against making light of such a thing, but the money was too good and soon his family was well off, as he always said. One of his orders of business was to seek out one of his old companions, Pamitha Thane, to whom he took a liking during their quest for freedom. They bonded further over love of drink and supported one another through uncertain times that lay in store. Greentail always did his best to keep in touch with all his many friends and knew that he owed his fortunes to them. Made special point of staying close with the group of friends he came to know so well during his time with the Nightwings, wherever they were. Shared a special understanding that it put even Greentail at a loss for words sometimes. Who's over here? You had a beef with Ruki. He still got his music. Barker Ashpaws never had much interest in returning to the Commonwealth, for he always found its bylaws to be stifling. So when the rites ended, he didn't care at first. He soon grew very bored. The rites had given his life, his life a certain sense of structure he had always needed, missed the raw anticipation of it all, decided to continue conducting the rites for the thrill of it. He bent some of the rules, replaced some of the objects, but it was close enough. Packmates, the dissidents, proved more than happy to participate, and thus they ran against each other back in the valley. Gradually, other exiles familiar with the rites, as, those, as well as those who had not heard of it at all, started to take an interest. Gave him some healthy competition. His old friend, Rookie Greentail, caused meaning, ceased meaning anything to him. Feud, not friend. And he forgot all about it amidst, amidst his new pursuits. Ultimately, even Barker Ashpaws, who had led such a directless, directionless existence at this point, found something of calling through the rites. Whether he took the rites less seriously than any other exile of his time or more was oft debated by those who watched him work. What about her? Cycle the rites ceased turning. Records of what happened to the Black Wagon became contradictory. Exiles continued to make use of it as a place of shelter, means of travel, no recorded cris- no record record of what happened to the contents such as the Brook of Rites or the Beyonder Crystal, said to be haunted by the apparition Sandra the Unseen. The lone minstrel took his leave, he took the Beyonder Crystal with him for what he was thus obliged. By this line of reasoning, however, the black wagon itself should have been taken also. Others remained skeptical the crystal ever existed. If there existed such an object in which the Sisters of the Arch had been expelled for more than 800 years, ancient band of killers almost trained almost from birth to carry out missions, then the enchantment could have expired along with the light of the stars. What this would have meant for Sandra and the Beyonders is difficult to say for certain, although it may have meant that they were finally released. Fates unknown. Spoke with reverence and fear. Ah, he didn't read that. Sir Deluge escaped the war-turned waters of the Sea Dominion, escaped the blood borders of the Commonwealth, and now he had escaped the rites. 
After the rites ended, many exiles wrapped up in the ancient test were crestfallen as their last chances to return to their home vanished along with the stars above. Deluge did not mind, for this outcome meant that at last there was no burden of responsibility weighing down on him. Having heard that Sir Gilman had also remained behind, Deluge made a point of avoiding him at all cost. Nonetheless, they ran into each other once, riding a current, cold current in the Sea of Solus. Meeting was terse and cordial. Deluge ended up apologizing profusely for mistreating his fellow Worm Knight, and that was the end of it. Most of his exiles of the Pyre Hearts yet longed for the waters of the Sea Dominion. Driven as ever by their impulses towards conflict, Deluge, Deluge settled down. With him remained one of his companions, Lady Seagrass, who had taken a liking to him for some reason. Reportedly, they disappeared in the waters of the Gulf, which may begin to explain the significant increase in worm populations observed in the vicinity. Got busy, dude. What about Manly? When Manly Tinderstolf realized the rites had ended, he had no longer, and that he could no longer return to the Commonwealth through this ancient means, he was outraged. He cursed the scribe, spewing forth such a slew of blasphemy as to be very unbecoming of one of his size, status, and bearing. When at last he calmed himself, he focused all his energies on attempting to find another means of homecoming. He maintained regular contact with his wealthy family on the other side via imp, and they used their vast resources to control other means of escape, explore other means of escape. He tried using an elaborate pulley system. He attempted to retrofit a flying black wagon with superior propulsion. He tried an imp raft, a hot air balloon, even prayer. Nothing worked. There was only one way to escape the downside, and now it was gone. Tinderstoff bankrupted his family in these vain attempts. At last, such was his shame that he retreated to the teeming woods of the Black Basin to Cinder Root. There yet he wallows, complaining to the comrades of the chastity who still put up with him, either about his own misfortune or the latest news from the other side. Heck that guy, dude. He got what's going, f what was coming to him. Uh, what about me? The Commonwealth had never provided a sense of home for the one they had called May the Moon Touched, so she was surprised on her return that she was so well treated. <laughs> Everybody on the right is the people that uh, we went against, and most of them had less than noble reasons for wanting to go back. Some of them were sympathetic, but... All the people on the left were people I knew directly. She felt uneasy about it, besides she knew that she would do her best to fulfill the pledge she had made to her friends. Even she could not have expected the impact she would have on the events that followed, which gave rise to the Union. Despite not fitting the image of any of the eight scribes, May nonetheless stood out alongside the others amid the teeming masses on the night of the scribes' return. She spoke of the scribes with such conviction and sincerity that the crowd was very moved. After the fall of the Commonwealth, there was a renewed interest in the legend of the Eight Scribes and many new interpretations of their histories and teachings. Found herself at the center of all that. Compel a growing audience, swayed many people from their astralist beliefs. Astralists were... Divine authority rep, rep, yeah, rest with the stars. Soon the Eighth Word, believing the Eight Scribes were more than mortal and their words divine, which had lost favor with the people during the reign of the Commonwealth, sought her out and asked her formally to join, and she did right away. I mashed that when I moved my leg, dude. She cited her relationship with Jodariel as the single most important in her life. Jodariel would always provide for her a circumspect perspective and the wisdom of experience. May always was devoted to her faith, but more so her friends. Many people in the Union cited that her gentle manner and unwavering conviction helped them brave the changing times with courage and grace. I liked May a lot. She was probably the second best character I played with. It's pretty close. She was nuts, too. Pamitha was incredible. But May was really good, too. She's smiling again. After her liberation, Jodariel soon became an icon of the movement that led to the collapse of the Commonwealth and the rise of the Union. Her horns and stern countenance inspired the people to believe that she was solely a myrrh, reborn. She became a great, if reluctant, leader. If the uncertain times, in the uncertain times that followed, Jodariel's seasoned expertise often came to play, both in matters of security and of state. 
Yeah, she's she is like peak bisexual disaster. She's way more like sure of herself at this point, but when we first met her, she was not in a good spot, dude. She was not in a good spot. I knew she had to go back. She had such a good character arc, honestly. For instance, she conscripted and trained a team of volunteers in public safety. The community did not know what to make of such a cordial bunch at first, but soon came to value their service. They've stood for the people ever since, and we celebrate their founding day each year. She remained close with Hedwin all throughout this experience, and they supported each other through their struggles many, many times. She kept an eye on May, who nonetheless demonstrated a surprising knack to get by on her own, though Jodaria was always willing to provide assistance just in case. Sometime later, she ran into Ignarius, that's right. Also liberated, both their horns had started to recede by then. Two of them grew close and soon took residence together. I gotta see fan art of her without horns. Somebody's gotta have drawn that at some point. She continued training on her own, a regimen that grew stricter with each passing year. There were those who sought to train with her and she sometimes obliged. Remained one other constant in her life, she would always remember her days among the Nightwings with fondness for the most part. Good character. Who did she get along with? Hedwin, I guess. Conceal Davidias. The kid. After his liberation, Hedwin was instrumental in the li events leading to the fall of the Commonwealth, vital to the outcome of the plan. Peaceful outcome of the scribes returned was contributed to several key factors. One of them was the underlying ambition of the plan itself. Another was Hedwin's visibility among the people in the streets. Identified to be a liberated exile, he was believed to be goal reborn. More importantly, however, he was was that one of the winged harps of the high wing remnants accompanied him. She was later identified as Fikani. Their bond was symbolic of what was at stake that night and proved vital to the peace that followed. I knew he was going to be a big, like, player in the... He was so unsure of himself, too. Good choice. In all his days as leader in the Union, Hedwin often confided in his friend Jodario. Despite her intense manner, there was no one whom he trusted more in times when circumspection was required. Hedwin would also th often think back to the vow he made at the beginning of his quest for freedom. Though he cherished all the friendships he made, he pledged to Jodariel, Rookie Greentail, and the reader of the Nightwings that they all might be free again together. He broke in that vow, for in the end, not all of them were able to return. Terrible guilt over the starkened his mood for a time. I was the only one, dude. I got everybody else back. All the others whom he knew still lifted his spirits, much like he had often lifted theirs. All of the Nightwings knew the stakes. While the others stood, who stood with the Nightwings were not all able to remain in contact. Thus Hedwin thought of each of them very often, and so in turn did they oft think of him. <laughs> Tamitha was motivated by a single goal, to return to the Commonwealth and exact vengeance on her ancient enemies. When she realized the rites had ended, that she would never see her mountain home again, she nonetheless remained determined to aid her people however possible. Gathered a certain information pertaining to the interactions and tensions of the Nightwings, who had formed a pact to regroup on the other side. Other such reports exposed certain weaknesses in the Commonwealth defenses, and revealed to the Highwing remnants an opportunity for a risky but potentially impactful strike. As Tamitha could not participate in the assault, she learned what happened well after the outcome. On that night, notice the scribes returned, the Commonwealth had fallen, the Hidewing remnants thus prevailed at last without even having to fight. Soon after the fall of the Commonwealth, Tamitha learned that her blood sister, Pamitha, was an accessory to the successful outcome. Tamitha was very success skeptical about this, but as similar reports kept mounting, she soon accepted the prevailing of opinion, however grudgingly. Once a messenger imp arrived, bearing some sort of message, seemingly from Pamitha, However, Tamitha turned it away. She would not give in to the impulse to forgive. Knowing that the conflict on the other side had ended, she retreated to the crags of Black Basin and grew ever more distant. Those closest to her surmised that her inability to reconcile with her blood sister was at the heart of this. Though for her part, Tamitha never once admitted to any weakness. See, she didn't want to go back. Not really. After regaining her freedom, Pamitha found herself in a different position, difficult position. Having once betrayed her people of the high wing remnants, 
She knew that she would not be welcome in her native home. She did not trust the Commonwealth either. Instead, she found her place among Wolfords and the Woods agents in Nevada, turned out the plan was a success, stood shoulder to shoulder with fem- fellow former exiles. Truly, they were a sight to behold. Disturbing rumor later spread that, that night the high wing remnants were slated to mount an assault. Yep, never came to pass. Denied any knowledge of involvement. Played an active part in negotiating terms between the high wing and the new nation that would become the Union. Previous attempt of something of the sort led to her exile. She must have felt some satisfaction to succeed this time around. Some time later, Pamitha had an unexpected run in with Ruki whom she had spent a fair amount of time while traveling with the Nightwings. Under these new set of circumstances, it turned out the two had more to talk about and rather more in common. But often put to test which one was able to outdrink the other. It's unclear as to which one of them prevailed in the contest in the end. One day, Pamitha received an invitation to return to their high wing. Where she was to be fully pardoned, she held out a hope that she might see her blood sister Tamitha there, knowing full well that Tamitha did not regain her freedom. Tamitha did later learn that Pamitha was welcomed back by her people, never responded to the attempts to contact her, did not expect forgiveness from her at any point, nonetheless she kept on trying to reach out, she said, to ruffle up her feathers a bit. Later asked, she admitted she felt as though she had no home to call her own. During an interview conducted amid the expansive trip abroad, for she had traveled thousands of leagues beyond the bound of the Saurian Union, continued to journey thus, citing that it reminded her of when she was younger and could fly unfettered. All right, let's read Orlex. After the shimmer pool closed for what would be the last time, Orlex looked around him in the flickering light of the Nightwing's still burning pyre. He then turned to the fall of Solium and looked up towards the black starless sky. He cursed the eight scribes and then, one after the other, After that, he strode forward towards the waters coursing from the side of Mount Elodio. Without hesitating, he cast himself down. Orlek's body was never recovered. The drop from Mount Elodio does not appear survivable, although he did survive it once. That time, however, he was filled with fury, such was the betrayal he had suffered when his fellow exile claimed his rightful freedom. This time, Orlek was filled with nothingness and chose to leave the downside in the one way he still knew he could. The other night wings who were witness to this never forgot what they saw. Yeah. That sounds about right. Didn't she want to be down here? She sealed herself within the pit. Left her to her vile work. The pit erupted into flames, so intense is the conflagration that it could be seen all the way from the valley. Arson was suspected. Da, 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 da. When the, the ashes settled, grounds cooled, sight of the fire was scarred beyond recognition. No trace of her could be found. All of everything was gone. Back in the Union, her repeated threats of the return of Eastlock were thoroughly investigated and no credence was found. Good. Heck her. Oh, we do both of these at the same time. I see. It makes sense. Cycle of the rights drew to a close. It grew evident that a chance at freedom from the downside had forever sli- slipped from Dalbert and Almer's grasp. The exiles of the fate returned to the valley, struggled to get by as the exiles of the downside tend to do. Commonwealth had fallen. It brought Dalbert great joy. Passed peacefully in his sleep before the next new moon. In the final days, implored his son to undertake a pilgrimage to the scribes. Almer Almer never shared his father's view of the scribes, respected Dalbert's wishes, began a new journey. Hmm. See, I wish I would have gotten more time with him and May. They never got to talk after, like, that first meeting. Uh, And there was definitely something there that... I didn't get to see. One more bad dude. After the final liberation rite, Lendell refused to believe that the rites had truly ended. Sit through night after consecutive night, staring into the blackness in the sky, awaiting any sign, kind of sign he might gain another chance at freedom. No such sign ever came. He and his fellow accusers started to express concern for him. Survival had become their top priority once liberty had slipped from their grasp. 
He insisted that any evening now the stars would shine for him again and mark the way towards his inevitable freedom. He was, of course, mistaken. The others in his triumvirate were left with little choice but to abandon him. After that, the exile knows Linda the Liar was never seen again. There's been sightings of a bedraggled demon who wanders the downside and bears Lindell's cruel countenance, suggesting he lives. Several exiles of the Nightwings cared more for the plan of Sandalwood than to return home from the downside. The crone, Big Bertrude, was a prime example. She had found a suitable environment to live within the dismal reason, region of the flagging hands, built up a thriving place of business known to many exiles in the land, with the rites ended, she returned to her preoccupations, working away almost as though nothing had happened. When one gets to be more than 400 years of age, perhaps even monumental events such as the culmination of the rites or the collapse of the Commonwealth are seen as trifling matters. Much of her effort was doubtless due to the influence of Sandalwood, someone whom she had added to death. He had made clear he could not requite her feelings for him. Hurtful dismissal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she just didn't strike me as like, I mean, interesting character, but like she didn't seem like she wanted to go back at all. I did wish I could have sent him back. When the cycle of the right ceased turning, he turned towards the starless sky, closed his eyes and prayed. It was all that he could do at that stage of his plan. He aspired to assemble with liberated exiles representing each of the eight largest ethnic groups composing the population of the Commonwealth. They would stand together as a vision of the eight scribes returned, inspiring the masses to embrace an older set of values from before the Commonwealth had tightened its grip. With the rites ending sooner than expected, this ideal scenario became impossible. Sandalwood's own freedom, for instance, was now forfeit, yet the plan did have contingencies. Fortunately, most of those contingencies did not prove necessary. Word reached him on the night of the scribes' return. Fellow liberated Nightwings stood together. Voices echoed through the streets. Former exiles who ought to have disappeared into the ranks of the Commonwealth's own leadership now stood united with its people, poured out from the homes, their homes in solidarity. Imperative to stand against the Commonwealth, be peaceful in nature. An overwhelming show of popular support would be more than enough. Ensuring this was his priority in the end, the result was self-evident. The plan's goal had been achieved. Kept busy after that, providing counsel from afar to those who'd be at the forefront of the Union. Only so much you can do from the downside. Capable hands. Might never return. Experience its triumphs and struggles in some vicarious way. Writing and printing. Literacy began to spread. Downside residents also. Material to read. A semi-annual report about the latest events, both in the Union and the downside. Trusted friend and keen editor. I'm glad my literacy helped me out in some way. <laughs> I got a job. I'm like the only person who can read down in the down, whatever it's. How did I already forget what the freaking place is called? The downside. There we go. <laughs> I just read it. Steadfast about two things. First, that the cause itself ought to remain in focus, the freedom that the people had achieved, gift to be cherished, set of values that needed to be nurtured. Second point was that he made he made was that he himself had little to do with the outcome. Often praised the exiles of the Nightwings who had stood with him each in turn by name, never forgot any of them, commemorate his birthday, people unveiled a monument. Sandowood did not learn of it until much later, it said that he was moved to tears. Good dude. Overall, good dude. The Worm Knight Sir Gilman had elected to go into exile as penance for his failure to uphold his military obligations in the Commonwealth. To him, earning back his freedom was tantamount to erasing the shame of his past. His honor was at stake more so than anything. Yet when it became clear to him that he would not go free again through the rites, he readily accepted the outcome, for he knew by then that much more was on the line. He regretted not having had a chance to contribute directly to the events that transpired in the Commonwealth, though he was pleased to hear the outcome. The conclusion of the rites and the fall of the Commonwealth made clear to him that his days as a knight had ended. He declared to all of those in earshot that he would never fight again. 
Unless, of course, there was some other extraordinary set of circumstance again requiring him to fight, but he certainly hoped not. Trained regularly, though never found as skilled and motivating of a partner as his fleet-footed friend Ruki, whom he remembered fondly. From time to time, he would seek guidance from one of his former comrades, Big Bertrude, much his elder, and a wellspring of perspective on his life decisions. He was also always grateful for the counsel of the reader, regaled them over and over about the time they squashed the spawn. Da -da 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 -da. Wasted no time dwelling on his days in leadership under Sir Deluge. Gilman did not return to his own homeland of the Sea Domain, was content to leave a monastic life and a small residence in the hills, just high enough, enough to make him keep striving to conquer his fear of heights. Other than that, an intense daily training regimen and the occasional visit from an old companion was more than enough to keep him optimistic and engaged. He knew by then that honor was not something to be won, but a contract with oneself to be renewed each day. And we've got the minstrel. After the cycle of the rites ceased turning, Blown Minstrel and bade their remaining Nightwings take the Black Wagon and seek their fortunes elsewhere. Parting was heartfelt but brief, remained there at the summit of the mountain. Two of them, or with Celeste, where the two of them would chronicle the final outcome of the cycle. Neither Tariq nor Celeste were ever seen again. We know all this now through song attributed to them. Some claim these songs originated in the taverns of the Sarian Union and merely were imbued with the weight of folklore. However, exiles liberated from the downside corroborated each other's claims at having met this duo that presided over their liberation rites. Another folktale suggests that the minstrels were heralds of the scribes. Having fulfilled their obligations, they departed the world we know and rejoined their patrons. One of their famous songs describes another, simpler outcome, that the two gave up their duties to the rites in favor of a life that they could all share together. In any case, they are likely to remain the subject of such verses and such songs, for it is, was they who watched over the rites and ushered in our times. There is one more account which warrants mention. The night wings conducted the rites under the guidance of a reader. Little is known of them. However, some accounts of them begin to paint a picture. We know that they were of common birth. Raised parentless, a product of the foul work on the blood border. Those were just options I picked. The journey to the downside left them close to death. Then the night wings found them. They brought them from the brink, they showed them the path. They pressed on onward with the others. Shoutouts to neutral pronouns, by the way, that option was also asked of me. They did not know how far their path would lead. Thus did the cycle of the rites commence its final turns. When the final rite arrived, the reader's freedom was at stake. In the end, they were made in exile. From that point on, accounts of them diverge. It is said that the voice which troubled them never was heard again. Some say they chose to tend the downside's land. Though whether that is true, only they know. I did say I wanted to, like, retire to the countryside and farm. I forgot about that one. Someday, perhaps, the reader's own star shall emerge. Then it shall pierce the dark of night in all its brilliant glory, till such time never after all of us give thanks. Their journey began on a barren waste where the reader arrived, afraid and alone. Prevailed and 
She's still got the horns in this one. He doesn't have his mustache in the silhouette. The moon touched girl. <laughs> Here's the scribes in the world. That dude in the background, though. They have guided her home. She's just. What's her name from Harry Potter? Luna. Luna Lovegood. That's Rookie. He's vomiting. She has found her way home. They follow the stars. Found together. Strands in a grave till the end. Dude, Logan Cunningham, Cunningham is such a good voice actor. I can never pin down who he's playing. Darren Korb did Udmilda? That's hilarious. That's hilarious.
Was this the fixed area where the final, like, challenge happened every time? The liberation rite? Kind of looks like the same window. Top of the mountain library. The end. Boom. True Nightwing campaign mode unlocked. What does that mean? <laughs> does that mean I get to play as Aurelac? Interact, load campaign. I think that's like the save right before. True Nightwing. For players who have finished the campaign, your adversaries shall be favored by the stars themselves. Base difficulty, same as what I was on. All Titan stars unlocked, some must be used. Enlightenment cannot, sorry, required to rank up, rescaled. Cannot load checkpoints or restart rights. I didn't do that anyway, really. See, I don't know why they would take away three. Well, I guess I guess I understand. God, it's punishing if you mess up setting your people though. That sucks. I would quit. I would quit the game honestly and restart the whole game. Book of Rights and White Loot fi fully unlocked. Oh, the loot was the um, the music, the sound test. Slug Market inventory fully unlocked. Feats of Glory introduced much sooner. Okay, so that's like not Orlek. I thought I was gonna get to uh, play as him based on the name. Whatever. Pretty good game. It kind of let's let's pick our words here. So I knew what did I know going in? I knew that this game was similar to. Spirit Bear, which is why I wanted to play him back to back. Because you have to say goodbye to the people that you're working with. Like, you don't gather your people in a party and then, like, finish the game with everybody. In Spirit Bear's case, it's literally about them passing on, and it's much more of an emotional journey. This is much more of a gameplay thing. And the praise that I saw about this game was mostly centered around how interesting it was that the more investment... Why it... Okay, there's... Th the captions need to be redone. I need to, to tweak them a little bit, because I'm getting like... When I talk a lot, I get too far. And they, uh... Maybe it's fine, whatever. The more you invest in the characters, the better they get, but... The, the closer they get to actually leaving, which is inherently, like, it hurts your performance in the game because your best players on the team, for lack of a better phrase, have to leave at some point. And that's what they want, that's what you want, to get the ending. So the emotional bit conflicts, naturally, is, like, at odds with the gameplay, which is cool. That's really cool. The problem that I think is that how much they butt against each other is very much dependent on how hard the game is. Because if you win everything, then there's not a lot of worry that you're not going to be able to get stuff done. The best part of this game was when it was hard. And I think the fact that they allow you to do the optional challenges, like the, um, the stars, helps a bunch. Because you can tune the difficulty to exactly what you want. The problem with that is that you're intentionally handicapping yourself and forcing yourself to lose, which doesn't feel good. Like, the kind of person that gets the most, like, it feels like the right way to play this game 
involves making yourself lose or being very close to losing, which is, you know, if you want that out of a hard game, that's fine. Because, like, some people like me like playing hard stuff. What I don't like is playing hard stuff that you can't restart and learn from. I lost most of my matches. I, I should fix that. I lost all of my matches when I did not know what was coming. When I could... When I knew how to play the game and could plan, I didn't lose a single match. Um, Orlek beat me the first time and I never got to practice against him again, which is why I was scared at the, la at the end that I was going to lose. Um, when certain teams got like their level threes or something and showed me new strategies, I got steamrolled by it. The specifically the pyro hearts, where they would jump at you and kill you and like sacrifice themselves and respawn faster, that sucked. I didn't know how to can't ki uh, I didn't know how to counteract that. But as I learned, I stopped losing. I, I won all but one liberation right, and I don't like that the first liberation right you do is against somebody you haven't faced before, because I didn't really get to see Ignatius's character. I really didn't want him to win because he was a jerk, but I didn't get to know him over the course of the game. Which was another cool thing, because you got to know your enemies over time. It's just an interesting balance that I felt like I, I felt like I was kind of I lost a little bit of experience because I started winning so much at the end and I played on hard. I was quite angry that I lost the first couple matches. Um, after the liberation right, I was getting stomped. And some of them were very close and I felt like I was actually with the people with the other exiles and like that first loss was devastating because the music cut out and I was just forced to wallow in the fact that I lost it felt horrible but it felt like I appreciate the game for doing that it was it's interesting to think about I think it's a game that I appreciate more than I like to play and I've had a couple of games like that like I, I respect it trying to think if I like it more than... I think Transistor is my least favorite of the Supergiant games I've played so far. Also want to test something while I'm talking. Oops, that paused it. Okay. Okay, back into the music. I think the main, what felt like the the weakest part of Transistor and Bastion was that they ended before I really got a chance to dig my teeth into the mechanics. I felt like they ended before I got a full chance to actually explore all the ways you can build s stuff in those games. This game lasted longer, and I think I got the full experience of the mechanics. I feel less led to replay this one than I do the other two games. Transistor specifically, um, I kind of want to replay because I feel like I missed a lot in that game. Whatever I did to the captions didn't actually help. I'll fiddle with that later. They're not perfect, I had to swap over a new thing. Um, so I do think this game lasted like long enough. I think it has a deep, like a deep set of mechanics. Honestly, this would be pretty cool play in multiplayer. I'm, I'm glad that they have a versus mode because I'm sure there's some people, I would not be surprised if there's a Discord server for competitive fire. 
This is a very cool game. I think there's definitely some busted strategies. And not just the stuff I found. Like, if you really understand how to fling the orb, I felt like, I feel like that completely changes it. That was the one thing I never really got into. I feel like move speed is busted. And I feel like certain characters are very outclassed. Like, I think the sap characters are pretty easily not the best. It, it feels like that because they get really hard countered by certain other types of characters. The ones that can jump far enough over their, their BS are like Pamatha, the Imps. Certain characters, and like May, May could just leap over everything. And obviously, a, a human a player would probably be more on the ball making sure that they block the shot if they jump in front of it. But it still seemed completely crazy that I could just jump over everything. That was why Pamatha was so busted. Pamatha was busted for several reasons, actually, because the AI did not understand that she was invincible when she dashed, and I would honestly just get free kills all the time. Less at the very end, but in the middle it was definitely just free-for-all. I would get everybody. I got a three-in-one at one point. The, um... Like, the worms, I think, were way more dangerous in the hands of the AI than I could do them, but... If some human player actually understands how to use them, I think they're nuts. I think it's a good game. I, I think it didn't... I, I, I didn't heard, hear great things about this game. I heard a couple, like, critics saying it was good, but I never heard anybody just raving about it. I heard a lot of people say, yeah, I played the other ones, but not this one. And I think this one is my favorite of the three that I've played. I think Transistor has a lot of potential, and maybe on a replay I would realize that. Um, Bastion gets old. Like, it feels like it's two-in-one. It feels like the mechanics of Bastion get old, but the, the creativity and how you do your loadout in Bastion don't get old. Like, there's a lot of stuff to fiddle with in that game, but it, it's not as deep. This game has a lot to fiddle with and it feels much deeper. Like the actual act of playing the game is the most interesting of the three and it's fast paced. I think there's three difficulty levels. I think there's two below the one I played on. Yeah, so I started on standard and it felt like I was just crushing everything. Heightened was quite hard, but most of that was because I didn't know how to play the game actually. So it, it did encourage me to play the game. I had to go back and actually watch the tapes to figure out what I was doing wrong and where I was mo uh, losing. And then reduced is probably mostly for story, I guess. But again, I, I feel like the difficulty is very tied to how good the story is, because if you don't struggle, you don't feel like the struggles of the characters are actually valid. And I think that's a careful balance, and it is kind of up to the player to really get the most out of that, so I can see why some people wouldn't resonate with it as much. I think I did pretty good, though. Solid game. And I finished it before Baby gets here. So... I've got... Sunday. And then... Probably not Wednesday. I will, because I've got family coming in on Wednesday. And then Thursday... <laughs> We have baby appointments into induction. So, yeah. We got a week. And... Like, maybe Tuesday? We also might just be busy. I think it's gonna be the opposite. Like, work, I'm not gonna have to do anything at work, pretty much. So I'm pretty much gonna be free. So... Honestly, I might stream Tuesday. We'll see. I'd like to get two more, but I don't know what I'm gonna play. Maybe I can start. Oops. Maybe I can start Hades. And just get a couple of those. Or I can, like, play Mario Kart or something. We'll see. I'll think about it. 
and then a long time without streams. So, yeah. Thanks for watching, Rainbow, everyone else who lurks. It is so much fun. I like playing games in front of people. <sighs> I'm tired. I'm gonna go take a long nap, long sleep because I still reeling from sleeping at the hospital. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Have a good one. Good weekend. Good everything. You know. Thanks.